I head up the 3D design team here. Um, anyone that, that is not here for 3D design, now's the time to escape if you aren't. And the other little thing is, if I get boring, and people tell me I can, start scratching your head, and I'll know that I have to move on quickly because I'm waffling too much. Um, but today, uh, I'm going to give you a 30-minute presentation on 3D design. Please feel free to ask questions as they pop up into your mind. Don't feel you have to wait to the end if you've got something you want to ask me about. I'm hoping to sort of share with you our values and passions for design. Plymouth University, obviously to try and answer your questions and to give you a chance to meet the students and staff. Now, I think some of you were here early this morning, so may have done the tours already. Otherwise, we've got some tours coming up. Um, but above all, to give you a sense for this place today, and uh, Saturday is not our normal working day, so it's not completely normal, but you're very welcome to come back anytime or email us if you want to come back and see something again but you're not quite sure about anything. Uh, to let you know what we're looking for, so you understand what we're about, we're looking for students that have an openness to new ideas, to experimentation, to, to exploring what design can mean, and a passion for design. Those are the kind of two core ingredients that we want from you. Obviously, creativity is integral into our subject. Uh, but also design thinking, so that you're sensitive to social, environmental, economic issues around there, and you're able to make some decisions, and you're keen to work hard. This is quite an intensive course. Uh, our studios are open every day of the week. Students are there working today, not just for you. Um, so you need to have that work ethic in order to, to make it work. And I guess today is to see whether what we're presenting to you fits in with your ambitions, what you want to do in terms of a future for design. This is our core team of academics. Of course, we have other support staff, technicians, etc. And there are nine of us. Uh, half of us are full-time, the other half are part-time, which means we're here two and a half days a week. Um, we all have practical and professional experience, and we try and bring that knowledge and that experience into the learning environment. Some of us are skilled in design, interior design. Matt is an architect. Uh, Roy and myself have done product. Mike there is also a product designer. Jonathan, uh, wave Jonathan. That's it, because we, we all know who you are. Is interior designer, and Kerry is a designer maker. And Polly was in here somewhere. Where is she, Polly? There, Polly's head of designer maker. So we have a a broad set of skills, a broad set of experiences, and we try and help you understand that and um, share our, our history. We've worked all over the world. This just shows you you'll recognize some well-known brands. Whether we're designing products, environments, or work for galleries, there's a very broad range of companies that we had, and we share that with you. We, we're still working with some of them, so we can bring them into the studio again to work with you on projects. Discipline of design is always evolving and always changing. So we are never standing still. You see that RP machine out there. Well, those are based in the studios because the students need to have them and be understanding how they work. The world is changing. Social issues to do with people's behaviors, the culture, the economy, all that, the resources of the environment. We want our designers to be at the forefront so they're bringing these issues into the things that they're designing. We need to be ahead of all that. Central to the way we work is what we call the studio culture. So I know some of you have seen the studios next door. Um, each student uh, has to develop their own design voice. We don't have a house style. We treat every student as an individual trying to help them develop the right design career for them. Uh, we have, as I say, quite experienced designers. We have a lot of visiting lecturers coming in. I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. We encourage a lot of team working. So you're not on your own. You're working with other people quite a lot of the time, generating your ideas. The teaching is very collegial in the sense that we do lots of tutorial teaching. We work with you on your projects. So it's a very much a two-way thing where we're working together to help you understand how we may be thinking and our experience in industry. 
And we encourage the students to all have their own space in that studio so they're comfortable. They work there sometimes to late at night. They work Saturdays and Sundays. They need their own desk so they can control and plan their own work. We have a very uh, a culture that embraces hard work and play hard. You've seen the table tennis table there. Uh, if anyone wants a little game after this, oh, <coughs> maybe we'll have a little wager. But we can see who can beat me on the table tennis. But you're very welcome to have a go. Um, and so that life-work balance is a very important part of our culture here at Plymouth. Uh, we are passionate about you doing well. And one of the ways we do that is to get you to engage with competitions whilst you're studying here. We have a great history in doing well, particularly in the Royal Society of Arts, which is a very well and renowned national competition, actually international. And our students have always done really well. We put a lot of effort, a lot of energy into you doing that well. Of course, there's lots of other projects around there too. Oliver Blanchard designed a new safe syringe. He won a lot of money. He came first in that prize. Uh, designed a syringe that would save something like three or five cents out of a syringe. Because in India, you can imagine how many syringes they have. And to save money, they reuse them. So he's trying to save money to make the syringe cheaper. James designing a lovely bench from his passionate in surfboards and designed this new technique for joining pieces of wood. And Joe Coleman, who designed the communicator, again, he won the Royal Society of, Pro of Arts for a project he designed to help people who are not techno savvy to link in with people who are. And it's a way of connecting, so a very interesting project. Careers, again, quite central to the way we work. We're always trying to think about what career you might want in design. Uh, Lawrence spent uh, three years here and uh, specializing in product design and went on to be a creative lead at Lego. And now we've had about three or four students going to work at Lego since he joined. Sean Ventures, uh, part of the team. He's a, the team lead who designed those new air fans. You've seen one out there at Dyson. Um, Becky was lucky enough in her project to go to Madagascar. She worked with local people to design products out there. She's now created her own business called Boo Enterprise, based in Plymouth, that has stuff uh, made in Madagascar and shipped all around the world. That all came from her working on a project here. Um, Joe Lane and Claire Lovett have set up their own ceramic studios, making pieces for galleries. Uh, again, their passion was around ceramics, and so they naturally formed the partnership that led into a career. John Caswell, another prize winner, I'm getting a lot of those prize winners in, um, <clears throat> now works for Cod Stakes, and that's part of the team that put together all the stuff for Wallace and Gromit movies. And I said this earlier, James Otter, who had this passion for surfboards and created a new way of skinning a surfboard. This is hollow, by the way, in wood that he's using to create unique um, bespoke furniture. What is out there? Gemma graduated with us. Uh, she won a prize uh, for um, a, what do you call those things? In the, in, uh, peers, thank you. A peer, thank you very much. Um, and landed a job with LDA Design and were part of the team that put together the concepts for um, the Olympics. And Helen Dowsett completing a BA and an MA here. She stayed on for an extra year to complete her MA. Um, now works with Norman Foster Partners in New York as an assistant architect in that area as well. So you can see the diversity of, of careers that our students want, and they're all very different, and we encourage that. But in terms of our specialist subjects, um, we kind of categorize these into three core areas, products, furniture and ceramics, which is another way of saying design and maker, and interiors. And of course, our students are allowed to cut, cut across those subjects. Uh, the product design course is accredited by the Charter Society of Designers, which gives professional uh, indemnity for things that you produce. Um, it helps you with intellectual property protection, helps you with your career, next step, etc. Um, and of course, they help us uh, be sure that what we're teaching you is the right thing for industry. No one's scratching their heads yet, so am I going at the right pace? Yeah? Tell me if I'm too fast or too slow. Or Yeah, too slow. Mm, you can't make your mind up, a bit like me, like that. Okay, so time is really important. And um, 
as I said, our students are working across disciplines all the time. It's really important that they learn from each other as much as from us and themselves. Uh, and a lot of the tutoring is done in small <coughs> groups, working around problems. We have open access to the workshops, which means you can go in there anytime you like. I think from 9 o'clock to 5, no lunch break. Um, we teach traditional hand skills alongside digital skills. So there's a lot of um, informative teaching where we're working with you on projects all the time. It's a very collegial way of working. We don't, we're not heavy on lecture-based stuff. It's a very high contact individual time. Uh, we have professional work placements. Uh, in the second year, students go off, if they wish, on a work placement for three months, or if they want to extend it for a whole year, they can extend it for a whole year. Uh, we work in transdisciplinary projects with healthcare. I'm looking at Mike here, just to give me a little bit of help on one of the projects that you've been doing recently. So we're working with all the different uh, faculties in the university at different times, which is really good. We do research assignments. As I said, we have live projects with clients. Clients in this region want you to design products and services and experiences and spaces for them, so they, they queue up wanting that. If you do so, we have lots of live projects. Uh, we do a ex global exchange program. Every year, we are lucky to send a student to Japan and, of course, other places around the world, mainly in Europe, too. And, of course, their exchange students come and spend time here. So the studio culture is made up of lots of different experiences, nationalities, etc. Um, and we also have extracurricular modules to help you prepare for your career. So maybe it's about putting together your portfolio, your CV, how to do an interview, um, how to be professional as soon as you leave here. Uh, but not all the working is done in the studio or the workshops. A lot of it's done outside as well, uh, particularly in courses like the, the Spatial Interior Designer, where, of course, it's very site-specific. So we take our students out to these sites. We go and see uh, manufacturers. Uh, we go on excursions. We go on a cultural trip every year, the first years and second years. Two years ago, they went to New York and Berlin. I think this year we're going to Amsterdam. And Pete, can you just help me? Barcelona. Um, that's all at zero cost, so there's no extra cost to you. It's all embedded in the fees, just to let you know. We also have something what we call masterclass. Because we have a lot of experience in industry, particularly with some well-known design firms, we like to share that with our students. Uh, this is taking students up to London, where we went to see Tangerine, IDEO, and Pentagram. This is Danny Vile, who heads up design at Pentagram. The students go there for a day, spend some time working in the studio, getting feedback from real professionals. We also have Kenneth Grange, who's a local to our area, so we kind of leverage that and ask him to come in, offer him an honorary degree. So he comes to talk to the students, Jonathan's friend, Sebastian Conran, not just names dropping, I mean they come and actually work with our students. It really helps our students know what it's like to be in industry designing real stuff. So the process. No one scratching their heads in the right there? Yeah. yeah. Um, the process is to build up your knowledge and experience over the years. And it's an iterative process design, not a linear process. And so each time we do it, a little bit like Russian dolls, you know, each one is sort of building on the former one. The first year is about exploring areas of design. <coughs> and we, we force you, if that's the right word, to try all the aspects of design before you may find your specialist subject. Um, in the second year, it's about uh, finding your chosen area, developing that, ex keep experimenting in that. We want you to make mistakes. We want you to experiment. We want you to get it wrong because that's part of the open creative process, open-mindedness to try new things. Uh, year three is about honing those skills, ready for that next step into either postgraduate study or into a career in design in some way. So that's the basic structure for our three years. In the second year, we have a special prize where one of you, or one of you and the group that were here this morning, will win one prize to, to go to uh, Prague with the faculty to represent and have a cultural trip to Prague as well. 
and also to act as a faculty ambassador during the following year. <coughs> so our three subjects that we, we focus on um, are just ways of, of describing particular ways of design. But the important thing here is to know that more things happen in between the disciplines than just the disciplines themselves. That's where the creativity really happens. Uh, the product design course is sort of based on this ideal methodology, which has a very user-centered approach, understanding how products are designed for people. But again, taking into consideration business factors and technical <coughs> factors as well. So designing things for people to use that are useful, you know, makes some sense, they're easily used, not, not difficult, and of course, delightful. You know, we all have passions for things that we want to use. Product designers work across a very broad range of products. Uh, this is an interesting project. Uh, one of the students designed alternative ways for people who don't like to swallow tablets. In fact, there's a high percentage of people. So he designed some paracetamol that can be taken as a jam on your toast in the morning, or a little pen. You know we all suck pens. You can just suck the pen, and so the, the medicine is given over a long length of time. Um, but a range of all sorts of things, sometimes humorous and fun, sometimes more purposeful and dynamic um, across many, many different kinds of industries. Again, it all depends on the projects that students want to work on whilst they're here. Design and maker is a term that we kind of pioneered here at Plymouth. Um, and sometimes it's difficult to, for people to understand, but it's very much about an intimate knowledge of materials. So the designer makers will spend a lot of their time in the workshop really getting to know processes and materials and becoming designers through that knowledge. Um, and being able to use that across a, a wide range of different areas. So designing all sorts of things from lights to ceramics to uh, textures, all sorts of things, working lots of different materials. Um, and again, it's the way that these designer makers are thinking and exploring and experimenting that differentiates them from, let's say, just craftspeople or other designers out there. For instance, this table here is designed by, Polly, I can't remember, Mike, and um, he was very interested to try and design a chair without using glue or nails. And so the way he thought about it was, OK, he built a frame, put all the bits of wood together, melted some jugs of pewter, poured the melted pewter into the chair, into the jig. Of course, when it froze and solidified, it made the chair rigid. It's the way he's thinking differently, new ideas, challenges, etc. And that's what we try and encourage our students to do, is to think differently, to think creatively, to explore and experiment in different ways. Our third strand, or focus if you like, is spatial interior designer. And again, that kind of crosses the boundaries between interior design, landscape, architecture, art, and engineering. So it's a kind of hybrid uh, type approach. Students are working on interior design projects. They can be kind of commercial or private spaces. It's not about carpets. Uh, curtains and cushions. Thank you, Roy, and you to get there. But it's more about the way in which these spaces are designed, working closer to the architectural sense of the word. Um, they work with public spaces. We have a great connection that uh, Matt leads with Plymouth City Council, where they bring in live projects and we look at the urban spaces, think about how we might upgrade those. And of course, ecological design. So the students are thinking about the future, and maybe it's about landscapes. And we allow them sometimes to have a little free hand and to do something blue sky or quite creative. It's not all, you know, it's got to be done today sort of thing. So there's that creativity thing is really important to express, to try things out, to explore things. Um, so, you know, so maybe working in public spaces or whatever. So all of that is a sort of mechanical mechanics, if you like, of the course. But what we want to do is to help you become a designer and to build up your own natural confidence as a designer, as opposed to applied confidence. Um, so we get you to present your work in this lovely building <coughs> downstairs to public and to professionals. So you get used to selling yourself and talking about yourself as much as the work itself, because that's part of the design world. Uh, we help you develop your portfolios and CVs so it comes across as being very professional and what industry you're looking for. Uh, we have Flux business games, which is a bit like Dragon's Den in a day, where you get to work interdisciplinary-wise with other people, coming up with concepts. 
We help you sell your work through pop-up shops or sell your services if you want to sell some design services. We have Formation Zone downstairs, which has helped startup companies, which is the company that helped Becky Barber with her Boo Enterprise. And of course, the progression, if you wish, into further academic studies, teaching professions, MAs, PhDs, etc. All of that is about developing new design character through this year. Okay, I'm going to show you a video. Has anyone seen the <coughs> degree show video yet? Okay, uh, that's good, because I've seen it a few times. Um, but I'm going to run this for you for a few minutes. I think it will work. Uh, everybody um, gets the opportunity to try out each of the three uh, different courses that is product design, uh, construction here, and major, and see which is the particular choice you prefer to specialise in. We decided to take a gap year because obviously um, when you start on the first year, they initially make sure it's not comfortable and bring you in as well doing one project a year. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, in case you don't know, maybe you all know, uh, this is uh, the process for application. Uh, through the UCAS, our code is 
W250. Uh, our tariff points for entry are 280, or the IB equivalent of 28 points. We like to interview all our applicants uh, to the course. Um, because we have uh, a variety of people wanting to come and study here, some have been in the industry for a while or been away, um, and what we want to do is to try and see what you want from this course during the, during the interview. So we don't just make a decision only on academic uh, uh, marks, etc. Uh, and we take roughly about 60 students a year. And that kind of pans out roughly at 20 students in each of those th three disciplines that we have. Um, we also have um, a scholarship, academic scholarship excellence award of 2,000 pounds for anyone who can achieve an A, B, B plus in their A levels or equivalent. Um, that's a new thing that's been started this year. So I'm hoping there's a little taster for our course in that. I'm sure you might have some questions. We're going to have a chance to meet the students and staff in a minute and have a tour of the students and workshops. Uh, we also have a party bag. Someone's going to hold one up and show us, that you must take before you leave, and it's full of little goodies. One of the things that we do with our students is we give them a set of objects, and we ask them to try and be creative with these objects, and inside that bag is a unique set of objects for you to think about. If you want to think about that and bring it to your interview, you're very welcome, but you're not forced to. Um, so has anyone got any questions? I can't have answered everything in that presentation. Yeah. Uh, what we're looking for is passion. As I said earlier, if you're passionate about design, you are most likely to do really well. And so the interview process and the portfolio is just the icebreaker for us to talk to you about design. So for us, it's to be informed, to show why you love design, to show why design means something for you. Um, and we can see that evident in the work that you find. If you're not doing an art-based subject, it's not the end of the world either. You can still put together a portfolio of stuff to, to help um, for that interview. In fact, we've got a session after Matt? Yes, after Matt, I've got a portfolio from the site to give you a portfolio advice. advice. Yes. Well, we uh, have a roughly 200 applicants or thereabouts. Not all the applicants we interview although we invite them all for interview anyway. So some may not decide that they want to come here, but probably 75, 80% come. We have, we have a very good conversion rate of applicants to interviews. Um, and then from that, we find out whether we're right for you as much as whether you're right for us. It's a two-way thing. It's not just, you know, do we think you're good enough or that. So it's, it's got to feel right for us too. So again, we do in a kind of experience thing where we take students around, they talk to students, etc. Um, but roughly about 200 applicants or thereabouts, that seems to be the norm at the moment with the £9,000 fee structure. Because that comes down to about 60 places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It comes down to about 60 places. And then it doesn't ever balance out that we have 20, 20, 20 in our different subjects, but it doesn't really matter. We can accommodate that. We, we have a good, well, there's nine academic team here. It's not your question, but... Um, so we have a good ratio in terms of working with that number of 60 students. It works well. That's how we like to teach. We then do a lot of lecture type teaching. Yes? Do you have any Hilton residents here? <laughs> I'm going to ask Kerry to answer that question for me. <laughs> yeah, that's fine.
Has anyone had a chance to go around the campus yet and have a feel for it and see the Hall's residence and things? Okay. Yeah. No, I didn't want you. <coughs> yeah. We did, yeah. Uh, we are a very hands-on course. We encourage our students to make and prototype and test and get it wrong and then remake and then perhaps get it right later on. So we are quite materials heavy. And uh, we ask you for an extra £5,000 to pay for materials. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have a materials budget within our fee structure to accommodate that. And when you sign up here, everybody gets one of these cards. And it's kind of a smart card. And we give credit to the cards so that when you go into the workshop and you need material, you can swipe your card and it starts to deduct the money that we put on your card to help you with materials. Of course, if you want to buy something exotic, like a precious metal or, I don't know, something that we might not be able to do here, then we need to kind of negotiate how we might do that. But the degree is not dependent on that. What we're looking for is your ideas and your ideas thinking. We have all the materials here. And the, just to expand, the, has anyone been in the workshops yet? We have, you had a sense for that. Uh, you know, we have a good number of technicians too to help you make things and store cupboards in there with materials. And you can see how we, we use that both in ceramics, in the woods, and in the metals. Thank you for your question, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. No more. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. We have metalwork in the Faculty of Arts. We have uh, uh, ceramics, we have woods, we have concrete, we have plastics, we have glass. Uh, we have composite materials in the Faculty of Technology that we can go and use. So if you want to do things in carbon fiber or glass fiber or resins, in fact, we have resins in the Faculty of Arts too. Uh, we have photography studios, so you can learn how to use a camera properly. We have printmaking studios, so you can learn how to print make. Uh, all of those workshops are open to you all, providing you pass the induction course. So the first few weeks of term one for first years is heavy on induction, because we have to get you through all those processes so that if you've lost your finger on the circus or you're insured, then we can give you some compensation for it. <laughs> I'm not getting you worried. But yeah, or oh, we print a three. <laughs> exactly, we'll print you a new, a new touch on finger. Thank you. So yes, all of that, and not only that, we are working, as Mike said, with other faculties. Um, we're working with robotics at the moment, helping them design a product for a hospital and care home to bring Skype into the homes. Give me some more projects we're working across interdisciplinary. We had, we had. Yep. Yep. Marine, exactly. So, yes, we are integrated. We're lucky because this is a quite a lovely building to be in. So they want to come and work in here anyway. So it's a great excuse. And of course, design changes lives. It helps them realize their ideas. And so. Uh, both in industry and on the university. We have something called Design Lab, which is a service uh, where we offer design talent to the university and to the outside world, and we charge them for it. It helps provide you the materials that we put on your card as well. So we're kind of smart about how we keep that rolling and, of course, integrating, because design is about working with other people. You know, it's about those context things. Hello. You're fine. We've almost finished, but never mind. <laughs> yeah, but we can. Don't worry. We'll help you out. <laughs> I was only supposed to take half an hour on this, and we're nearly there. We're over there. But, uh, yeah. Are there any interdisciplinary projects that you work on anything that obviously wasn't very much in the project? No. Um, interdisciplinary, transdisciplinary, interdisciplinary. These are all words that try and trip us up a little bit, but. What we do is we work with other people all the time, other skills. A designer is learning all the time. 
So they're not experts in midwifery. We're not experts in robotics. So we're working with other specialists together. And, and it's where those two combinations come together that the ingenuity, the innovation, the creativity happens. So we encourage all our students to work with other disciplines um, and to use their skills to complement our skills. Um, I once worked on a project in Korea, for instance, and uh, designing white goods for an LG company. And we had an interpreter, and it was the interpreter that came up with the ideas that we all went with. It's that openness to listen to anybody in terms of creative thinking. And so interdisciplinary work is important. In industry now, 85% of design work means you have to work with other people. Not always, because it doesn't suit everybody. But a lot of that work is, particularly in the kind of applied business type, consultancy type work. So you have to work with other people. That's why we do a lot of teamwork. That's why we get you to learn from peers. That's why we get you to do all these kind of live projects. Was that what you were expecting? <coughs> Have I missed anything off? So there's a chance now to talk to some students and stuff. I think we're going to have some tours. There are some students working in the studios too. Feel free to stop and talk to them. Please come back again <coughs> if you feel you want to experience the space again or feel what we like. If you want to come back, you can come back in a weekday, great, because then you can sit in on some of our sessions and get a feel for what we really do. Have a game of table tennis. Um, and uh, don't forget your party bags because that's the important takeaway from here today. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Enjoy the rest of the afternoon.